Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, Safari, and Microsoft Edge are perhaps the names that come to your mind when you think of web browsers. They are, after all, the most widely used browsers, with Chrome dominating the scene for quite a few years now. But in the early years of the World Wide Web, there was one undisputed leader, Netscape Navigator. It wasn't the first web browser ever, but if you had access to the internet in the mid-90s, it's very likely that this web browser is how you experience the web for the very first time. With technologies such as the SSL protocol, Firefox browser, and JavaScript, Netscape, as the 80s kids would know, has left a rich legacy behind. Programs that you may use today, even to watch this video right now, all owe their existence to Netscape. And for a business with offices in 14 countries and quarterly earnings of up to $120 million, it seemed as if nothing could stop Netscape from becoming the force to reckon with in the web browser industry. So what happened to Netscape? Well, as with any good Western, there was a showdown on the horizon. And in this case, the villain was none other than Internet Explorer. Despite its initial success, Netscape just couldn't compete with the might and shenanigans of Microsoft and the company laid off a majority of its staff and disbanded their business as we know it. In today's video, we'll take a trip back to the 1990s to talk about Netscape and the browser wars. Mark Anderson and Jim Clark started Netscape in 1994. The Wall Street Journal described Netscape's IPO as one of the most stunning debuts in the Wall Street history. Clark's initial $4 million investment was now worth over $600 million. Netscape Navigator quickly became the most popular browser out there unaware of the storm that was quietly brewing elsewhere, one that would change the course of Netscape's history. The lethal storm was Microsoft, which released Windows 95 and included in that pack the very first version of a little program called Internet Explorer. This bundling of the web browser with Windows is what would cause Netscape's eventual downfall. It was just something that they could not compete with. Remember, at this point, Netscape was not free. So people who had purchased a brand new computer and were new to web just ended up using Internet Explorer since it was already installed in their computer for free. But these business practices were very controversial as they gave Microsoft an unfair advantage. However, despite many lawsuits, Microsoft was never forced to stop bundling Internet Explorer with Windows, which resulted in the decline in the market share of Netscape Navigator. But Netscape at this point was creating more than just a web browser and the company itself was still valuable. So much so that in 1998, America Online, or AOL, purchased Netscape Communications in a deal valued at about $10 billion. At this time, Netscape still held more market share than Internet Explorer did. A year before the acquisition, Netscape did something major. It made Netscape Communicator free and open source, which resulted in the creation of Mozilla Organization. Around 2005, Mozilla was focusing on creating two standalone applications, Firefox and Thunderbird. Over the years, Firefox has emerged as one of the best alternatives to Google Chrome, which it still is. Today, millions of developers use JavaScript, and nearly 95% of websites are built on the scripting language developed by Netscape. JavaScript is what enables on-page web analytics and data collection. The SSL protocol developed by Netscape is probably one of the most important technological innovations of our time. If you're ordering a book on Amazon or a pizza at Zomato and paying online for it, you have to thank the SSL protocol and Netscape. The technology facilitates sharing of personal information such as credit and debit card numbers safely over the internet. Moving on, the concept of cookies, yes, those that we love to hate, also comes from Netscape. But Netscape's intention was not to track users, but solve the memory problem of websites. They wanted the websites to remember the users who had visited the page earlier. And as they say, legends never die. The Netscape brand itself was never completely discontinued. In 2012, AOL took ownership of the Netscape name before renaming the actual Netscape communication subsidiary to New Aurora Corporation and selling it off. And you want to know who it was sold to? Microsoft. But that's not even the craziest part. A few years later, Microsoft sold the company and the patents to Facebook, which is the present day owner. Netscape changed history. It may not be the dominant player it once was, but it will always be remembered as a trailblazer and pioneer in the world of technology. Cheers.